Well, so, speaking of stuff, we got pictures from the James Webb Space Telescope. Yep. I know you've been dying to get to them. I want to get to them too. So <laughs> I've been keeping you too long. Uh, so we got to get make sure we uh, we do this. So this is uh, cold exoplanet. This is twelve light years away. It looks like they blocked out a star so you can see the That's planet there. Good call. That's exactly what they've done. Well, I just read it. I mean, it's a good call. Taking the the, the light. <laughs> The infrared light that this star has produced, That's they've what we call modeled it. They've uh, mathematically modeled the brightness and how it varies, okay, of the star. And then they subtract that out from the picture. And lo and behold, there's still a bright spot. Too near the star for it to be another star. It also has the wrong spectrum for it to be another star. So what can it be? It's not a star. It's in close to this star. There's one of your first images of a planet around another star. Amazing. So it's in the infrared, but that's what you're seeing in that prior slide. This one, what you're seeing is the remnant of a supernova. Um, I forget when it was, but it's the closest supernova that's happened in a... Uh, Okay, 1987. I thought it was 87. Yeah, that's when they captured uh, it. This happened in, I think, the Large Magellanic Cloud, but it's the closest supernova we've observed <clears throat> in recorded history. Okay, not in recorded history, in the time of modern astronomy. Right. Because recorded history, 1066 was the supernova that gave us uh, the Crab Nebula. This is the center of a galaxy. I don't know which galaxy, but I can tell by those bands. Uh, yeah, NGC 1366. Yeah. And so we can see uh, here is that the center is nice and bright and shiny because it's got lots of massive hot stars. And then the red is where we see clouds of gas and clouds of hydrogen. This is where stars are forming, where they're being coming together and being created. Mm -hmm. So this is also part of what James Webb was designed to do, is look at galaxies and start being able to look at stellar star formation and how it's changed as the universe has aged as it's progressed. Hey, let me let me ask you something real quick. So, you know, we were just talking to say to go how maybe one 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 theory might be that like smaller galaxies uh, combine into one like to create these super massive uh stars i mean it, that's the thing right it's like it, all these stars coming together that's just way too much mass it's just going to collapse on itself and create this that's, I mean, that's the only way you can do it right that. yeah yeah like i mentioned i mentioned before the large magellanic cloud this is a satellite galaxy to our milky way eventually it's going to fall into the milky way mm -hmm. i mean i know it's weird thinking of galaxy falling into another galaxy but that's essentially what it is it's being drawn in by gravity it's falling okay now what's going to happen is is the stars of the magellanic cloud are going to mix into the milky way and going to form one more massive galaxy now if some of it falls into the center it's going to be sucked in by that supermassive black hole making it even larger wow so Yes, you're, you're seeing what might be the process for how you get supermassive black holes is all these small galaxies clumping together. Some of the material gets too close together, forms a black hole. That starts sucking in more material. If it gets in too close, you know, so I, I know the galaxy as a whole is getting larger and larger. I, I know a few people who 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 act like a, a supermassive black hole. They just suck all the energy in, and you're just like, "Oh my god, dude!" All yep. right, so this is uh, this. So that's cosmic cliffs. What's this? Okay, I'm not sure which, but this is a nebula, uh, or as I like to mispronounce it, nebula. <laughs> yeah, that sounds awesome. <laughs> um, and so. What James Webb is doing here for us is, is it's allowing us to see all the amazing detail. This looks like a cloud you would expect to see here on in our Earth, on yeah. Earth, in our sky. And so it's that amazing detail, seeing these clumps and gatherings and dis density differences 
in this cloud of interstellar gas and how it's being shaped by the stars around it, the stars in it, embedded in it. And it's, it's wild. It's crazy. I love it. And this is kind of the same thing, except I think this is probably either a planetary nebula or a, uh, Cassiopeia uh, a supernova remnant it says supernova yeah yeah wow they look like wormholes from star wormhole. trek like that like this one yeah. over here i mean this looks like a wormhole from star trek right yeah. this this Except whole circular thing here i mean it's just i mean i know it's not a lot a of gas and that blue region is where you've got high mass bright stars and it's reason it looks like a hole in the center of that previous picture of the previous one i was yeah the reason it looks like there's a hole around that blue place in it is because that's exactly what's happening those bright blue stars are blowing away with their solar wind their stellar winds the rest of the nebula that's why so that nebula will clear away and be blown into interstellar deep blown apart by those bright blue stars in the center you don't really think about so, wind in space like that. I know it's not the same as wind on Earth, but it's still, it's just one of those uh, things about space that is just so fascinating, you know? Yeah. And this is, a, that that's another probably supernova remnant. This is WR-124. Okay. A wolf so Rayet star? Wolf Rayet star. Wolf Rayet are, are old stars. They're very unstable. And they're blowing off a lot of material. And that's what you're seeing here is, is the bright, massive star in the center. And it's blown out all this material that it's lighting up. And Webb can see it. Beautiful. In the infrared. It was like Don and Rickles so, before he died. You know, he was just, he yeah. was blowing it up because he was and a star. It's not just that we can see it. It's, we can see all those details. This is a galaxy. NGC yeah, 7469. 7469. Yeah. And... Again, you can see those red places where stars are forming. And you can see the bright center where that supermassive black hole is almost certainly. And you can also see that there's another ring around it. There looks like there may be two rings. Yeah, it's like and here then, and then so, here. And then here. And then if you look right in at the center, the very center, you, right around the brightest part, you can see what looks like another ring. That pink ring? So it looks ring? like this galaxy has three rings of material. Yeah. That's wild. So we, we're we with James Webb. We're starting to be able to see these structures. And then this is the famous Pillars of Creation. Yes. This is another star forming region. And what the infrared, because infrared light, the shorter the wavelength, the bluer the light, the more it is scattered by gas and dust. So infrared lets us see into this nebula instead of it being the light being blocked. And so this one, I'm not sure. Orion Nebula? That, Orion. Okay, so that's another for star forming region. So looks very different in for infrared than what it does in uh, visible visible light. I should have sent you one of mine. And I am not, honestly, not sure what that pre previous slide was. Yeah, I don't know. It was, uh, it says it's uh, WASP39B. But it was an artist huh. uh, concept of it. Of, of yeah, Boston, I have no idea what that's supposed to be showing. And this was a, a sample spectrum that James Webb got. And you can start seeing what I was talking about. You, you've got an absorption line because this graph is flipped upside down okay. from what the others were that I showed you earlier. And so you've got one absorption line that seems to indicate water. And another that seems to enter, uh, mean carbon dioxide. And this is from an exoplanet. This is a planet around another star. And those two things and, are indicative of, uh, not not definitely, but they are kind of the telltale signs that life could be possible on those planets. Life could right? be there. Yeah. You know, carbon dioxide and water are ubiquitous. They're common in the, the universe. So this is an indicative of life. But it says the conditions are maybe right. 